First, I'd like to thank uh, the conference organizers and the uh, sponsors for putting this on. This is just a, a true honor being in such an amazing theater, and it's been a great conference so far. So today I'll be talking about how to tune your Node apps. But before I get into the details around how to tune a Node app, or what I think tuning Node really means, uh, I want to talk about an ideal that I have around two types of engineers. So in my mind, there are two types of engineers. On the one hand, there's an engineer that takes something apart, wants to put it back together, figure out how it, wor how it works, right? On the other hand, there's someone that gets, say, a new device or a new product or service or something. They say, what can I build with that thing? How can I take that and couple it with something else to create something new? So years ago, I was one of these folks that liked to take apart my computer, put it back together, tweak it, kind of figure out how it worked. And I figured, you know what? Why not go study the science of computers? Because clearly, this must be something where I'm going to be able to figure out more about how things work. Well, it turned out I wasn't really taking things apart. And it was a little too academic. So I was thinking to myself, you know what? This isn't really what I thought it was. I should probably change my major and study something a little more practical and con you know, concrete, like philosophy. <clears throat> because there's nothing more concrete and practical than studying philosophy. Uh, while I was studying philosophy, and I had all this time to think about the genealogy of morals by Nietzsche, or Kant's categorical imperative, I was spending all this time building things, creating websites, creating flash animations, building PHP CMSs, building custom MySpace profiles. I was that guy. And it turns out I'm actually a product person. I like to build things, create things, grab a set of disparate technologies, pull them together, and create something new. And an example of this is Dillinger. It's just an online markdown editor that I created a few years ago. It's completely free, open source, and has been pretty much picked up by the community of open source developers to get it to the state where it's at. But it pulls together a number of disparate technologies to create a product. And that's what I'm really passionate about. But today, that's not what I'm talking about. Today, I'm going to step out of my comfort zone a little bit, and why not, in front of 1,000 people in Paris, right? To talk a little bit about what makes um, a performant or highly finely tuned Node.js app. To create a performant Node app, there's a number of things that you can do. But there's two major steps. And the first one is to actually write performant code. It seems a little obvious, but if you're used to writing JavaScript strictly for the browser, there are things that you would do differently in Node that will make your code more performant. So if you have step one as sort of your foundation, step two is then being able to add some micro-optimizations by modifying flags with V8, the engine that powers Node.js. But before we get there, let's talk about writing performant code. In order to write performant code, it's probably good to understand a little bit about V8 and how it works. V8 is that engine that powers Node.js. It's super smart, and it's maintained and, and created by some of the smartest engineers on the planet. And it will outsmart you. So getting clever with it is not a really good idea. V8 is super fast because it actually takes your JavaScript and converts it to assembly. Yes, actually converts it to assembly. And in addition to that, V8 actually wants to optimize your code because V8 wants to be fast. It wants your code to be efficient and optimal. So the moral of the story is, don't make V8 think. If you're forcing V8 to think hard about how to optimize your code, even though it's really smart, it's not going to optimize it. So I suggest to people, write your JavaScript like you would write C. And I know what you're thinking, but Joe, I don't write C. That's why I write JavaScript. <laughs> and I am the same way. Who wants to man man manage memory, right? So here are some things that you can do uh, that you don't have to write your code like C. You don't have to write C. You can still write JavaScript. There are things that you can do with your Node apps to create that foundation of um, a performant application. So the first thing that I always mention to people is when you're creating functions, make sure that they're the same length and they're the same types every single time. Monomorphic or polymorphic functions are totally OK with V8. It will optimize them. But megamorphic functions, although very rare, will not be optimized. So you should try to stick with the same length and same types of your functions every time. 
When you're creating new objects, it's useful to use constructors and factory methods to make sure that the properties are actually added in the same order. What's happening behind the scenes with V8 is it creates what's called a map. And that map is what is referenced to every time it needs to refer to an object and create a new instance of it. If that thing changes frequently, it can't be optimized. In addition to that, when you're creating objects and you're adding your properties and values to them, you should add all properties and values to that object from the very first time, even if those values are in fact null or undefined. If you look at node source code at the event emitter class, you'll see this in practice. Because V8 only has to create that map one time, and it can refer to it every time going forward whenever it creates that object. Another dead simple optimization, don't mix your types and arrays. Why would you want to have strings and objects and numbers all in one array? V8 can't, modify, or sorry, can't optimize that sort of thing. In addition to that, and this is kind of C-like, if you have an array that you know is going to be 100 uh, items in length, pre-allocate that. V8 can actually optimize that thing. Now, 100 million items, don't pre-allocate that. V8, that's a bad idea. And another thing that's interesting about writing node apps where you can actually get some uh, performance gains here is not using random callbacks all over the place or anonymous functions. There's two reasons you want to do this. One, somebody else is going to have to maintain your code. Probably a good idea to name your functions. And two, when they're named, V8 will actually optimize them. And then finally, this little, I don't know, obtuse micro-optimization is, is pretty unique. But I, also, I always want to bring it up because it's interesting. Did you know that your function will be inlined if it's fewer than 600 characters in length? Yes, fewer than 600 characters in length, your function will be inlined. What is inlined? Well, V8 effectively takes your JavaScript and maps it to assembly. And if it can just call it directly, as opposed to having to use an additional jump statement in assembly and go and look for it, there's a bit of a micro-optimization you can gain from there. So again, moral of the story, don't make V8 think. There's a lot of great stuff that we can do with the JavaScript programming language, delete properties, create new objects, toss functions around. Doesn't help V8 and doesn't help you to make your app more performant and highly tuned. So now that we have a, a general idea of a foundation for how to write uh, efficient uh, node applications, or uh, sorry, uh, efficient JavaScript for node applications, we can take the next level up, and that's by micro-optimizing by setting certain flags in V8. If you go back to that list of, of performance wins that I just mentioned, there's that last one that we talked about. Keep your function's overall size to fewer than 600 characters. Why 600 characters? What if I had a bunch of functions that were 601 characters or 700 characters or something along these lines? How can I make V8 change to then inline those functions? Well, we can actually do this. If you take a look at this function, very simple, takes two parameters and returns their sum. But unfortunately, there's a ton of comments in there that makes it a bloated function and it's actually more than 600 characters. Yes, comments actually count against that character count. So what we want to do is make a modification to V8 so that the 600 character length is actually increased to, to cover this. And we'll show a quick demo of how that works. So this, uh, this node app, if you will, has, it's very trivial. It's trite. There's a big iterator at the top, a big number. So we're going to loop through something a lot to, to sort of prove the point. We're going to check for if the large uh, command line option is sent. And then you'll see there's two versions of effectively the same function, too large and in file add. If we have the large thing passed in, then we're going to call this function over this loop 100 billion times or whatever. Now, one thing you want to note here is that we have to do a comparison here because V8 is smart. It will know that if you go through this loop and assign the values to res1 and res2 and don't do anything with it, it's not going to run the code. So we have to force it to actually do that check. So let's take a look and see the non-inlined version of what this looks like. So what's happening is it's iterating a number of times through this loop. And because it's not using the inline version of the function, because it's more than 600 characters, it's super slow. It should take about 10 seconds, right? But if we change this to use the one that will be inlined, what you'll see is that it works in, about a, in a fraction of the amount of time, about two seconds, because that method was actually inlined. Granted, this isn't a you know, real world scenario, but it should prove the point that inlining actually gives you a bit of an optimization. So let's do one more thing where we're going to take this V8 flag 
called max inline source size equals 1,000. We're now modifying what V8 will inline. We're changing that value from 600 to 1,000. So this should actually optimize to about the same two seconds that it took the original inline function, yet we use that bigger bloated function. Just an example of how you can tune stuff to make V8 work better for you. There's another really cool flag you can set with V8 called allow native syntax. And what this does is it enables you to actually call out to C++ functions from within your Node.js uh, application itself. So inside your JavaScript file, we can call this percent set flags method and pass in the same thing that we just passed in from the command line, but within the actual JavaScript function. So again, some dynamic tuning of V8 actually while it's running. Let's take a look at that. So it's effectively the same sort of thing here where we have these two methods, very similar. Uh, but we took the iterator and divided it in half. And the reason is, down here, you'll see this is where set flags is being called. In between that one big loop and the previous demonstration is broken in half. So what we'll do is we'll comment it out for now. And you'll see at the top, we've added allow native syntax. This file is, in fact, executable. And because that flag is passed, we're actually able to call out to that C++ function. But first, we should see that this is still going to take about 10 seconds, just like the last one, because it's effectively the same thing. There you go. So now, let's come in and uncomment that set flags. And because it's in between that one bigger loop that's split in half, in theory, this should be about half the amount of time because that set flags is called. And there you go, about half the time, 5.8 seconds, not bad. So that's cool, we can dynamically set stuff, call C++ inside a JavaScript function, but what if we wanted to do something where we have a, an actual HTTP server running, something that Node does really well, and we want to hit an API endpoint or some URL endpoint and modify on the fly your V8 settings uh, by hitting this URL. So you can see here I've got this sort of middleware function that when this is run, it will actually run that percent set flags um, method that calls out to the C++ function, thus setting max inline source size. So let's take a look at that demo. Very straightforward um, server. And you'll see here, when we serve index, this is just going to be the, what handles our, excuse me, our default route, we're going to do this work function. And this work function is basically the same thing we were doing before, just that uh, trite loop that takes forever to run. But you'll notice, here's where our index is, so serve index, and then here's where slash runtime is, so run, serve runtime. This serve runtime is where we're going to call that method. Again, this isn't a, I don't recommend doing this in production, but the point is, is that we're going to have a node process running with an HTTP server running that will actually be able to modify on the fly by hitting an API endpoint. So first, let's get our server running. Great, there it is. Now, what we're going to do is run AB against this, just to get some feedback on response times. And what you'll know is, it notice is that it's taking a little bit of time, and our longest request was 121 milliseconds. Now, if we curl against that, that runtime endpoint, what you'll see on the left-hand side is it says setting flag. That means we went in and set that flag to change the max inline source size to 1,000. There we are. So if we run AB again, what we should see is that it happens in a fraction of a second, right? So this is, again, not a real-world production. I don't recommend doing this in production. But the point is, is that we're able to make modifications to V8 while it's running and get the immediate benefits from whatever that might be, whatever the use case might be as well. Now, I have barely scratched the surface when it comes to the myriad options that exist in tweaking and modifying V8. One of my uh, colleagues at NodeSource, Torsten Lawrence, has done an extensive amount of work on understanding uh, V8 and all of the different flags and has documented. And if you go to this URL here or just go to his GitHub profile, you'll see loads of stuff um, that will enable you to do cooler things with, with your Node apps. The, the reason that I want 
you to understand why I think this is cool is I told you at the beginning I was more of a product person where I'd like to take things and put them together. But what I've been able to do is now that I've dug in a little deeper and understood what's going underneath the hood of V8, so to speak, um, and how it actually functions and operates and all of the different things that we can do to modify and change it and tweak it and tune it, that's enabling me to think more creative and expressively about the products and services that I can build on top of it. So I encourage you to go and tweak and tune and do things to your node apps that you typically wouldn't do in the past to create much cooler and better experiences. Thank you.